In the quiet moments of our lives, health issues can arise that demand swift recognition and action. One such critical condition is a stroke, where every second counts in preventing long-term damage. Understanding the early symptoms of a stroke can significantly increase the chances of recovery and reduce the severity of its impact. Today, we will explore the crucial signs that signal a stroke, supplemented with information from medical experts and what tests to identify stroke, as well as some of the risk factors for stroke. Knowing these signs can be life-saving, and we're here to help you recognize them quickly and effectively. Imagine you're going about your day when suddenly, part of your face, an arm, or a leg feels weak or numb, particularly on one side. This alarming symptom is often one of the first signs of a stroke. It occurs when there's a disruption in blood flow to the brain, depriving it of essential oxygen and nutrients. Medical experts emphasize the importance of recognizing this sign promptly. Neurologists in our interviews explain the brain's role in muscle control and sensation, linking it directly to the physical weaknesses. They stress that if you or someone you know experiences this symptom, it's crucial to seek immediate medical help. Acting fast can mean the difference between recovery and long-term disability. Sudden confusion, trouble speaking, or difficulty understanding speech can be particularly distressing. This chapter delves into why these symptoms occur during a stroke. The brain areas responsible for language processing can be impaired when blood flow is obstructed. It's a real-life scenario where individuals have difficulty speaking or understanding language, highlighting the frustration and urgency of these moments. Expert commentary helps demystify the medical reasons behind such speech disruptions. They explain that when neurons lack oxygen, they don't function properly, leading to the evident speech and comprehension issues. This is a critical sign of stroke, and quick action is advised. Trouble seeing in one or both eyes can suddenly occur with a stroke. This chapter explores the visual impairments associated with strokes, such as partial or total loss of vision, blurriness, or blackened vision. Through detailed visuals, we explain how strokes can affect the visual pathways in the brain. Expert interviews provide insight into how and why these disruptions in vision occur. They note that any sudden change in sight should be taken very seriously, as it often points to a stroke occurring in the part of the brain that processes visual information. Our on-screen text and diagrams help illustrate the connection between brain areas and eye function, making it clear why these symptoms are a major red flag. Immediate medical evaluation is crucial to address the underlying cause and prevent permanent vision loss. Sudden difficulties with walking or maintaining balance are not just about clumsiness, they could indicate a stroke. Neurological disorders caused by a stroke can affect the parts of the brain that control coordination and spatial awareness. Experts discuss the implications of these symptoms and the importance of interpreting them as potential stroke indicators. They emphasize that such disruptions in balance and coordination warrant immediate attention to prevent falls and further injuries. Our visuals and expert narratives aim to equip viewers with the knowledge to recognize these signs quickly and act promptly, potentially saving lives and improving recovery outcomes. Another symptom of a stroke is seizures. Convulsion is the involuntary contracture of muscles, which causes disordered movements. It is usually accompanied by loss of consciousness. Seizures happen when the outer layer of the brain is excited. In the case of a seizure, the crisis may last seconds or minutes. The most important thing is to prevent the person from hitting their head on the floor. To do this you need to use support such as a cloth or a blouse. When the seizure stops, the head should be placed to one side so that he can breathe better. Let's talk now about the sudden tingling. Sudden tingling in peripheral regions of the body, such as hands, arms, feet, legs and face, is one of the first signs that something is wrong. In most cases, this only occurs on one side of the body. The senses were also altered, especially touch and vision. This could be a sign of a stroke. Another symptom is memory loss. Memory problems are other signs that may appear in an individual who is suspected of having a stroke. The degree of loss varies according to the situation and the region the accident affected. 
However, it is interesting to ask about recent events such as those that occurred on the same day, for example, what you ate for lunch, or about past events such as the birth of a child, wedding, among other important dates that the person easily remembered previously to assess their memory. Another symptom associated with stroke is facial asymmetry. It is a symptom that can occur characterized by one side of the face having more restricted movements, especially in the lower part of the face. The mouth generally deviates, falling slightly. The tongue is another area that undergoes changes in movement. To assess whether this sign is present, ask the person to make movements such as smiling, sticking out their tongue, moving it from side to side and making faces. If any abnormality is identified, it is necessary to seek medical attention. Types of stroke There are two classifications of stroke, hemorrhagic and ischemic. In the first, the accident is caused by the rupture of an artery or vein, resulting in local or diffuse bleeding that can cause hematoma, increased intracranial pressure and brain swelling. The latter is caused by the clogging of one or more arteries, which interrupts blood flow in some regions of the brain and interferes with neurological functions. The main causes of ischemic stroke are thrombosis and embolism. Ischemic stroke is the most common type, it represents 85% of cases and is normally associated with high cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure, arteriosclerosis and smoking. Now let's take a look at the exams or tests to determine stroke and what the risk factors are. Physical examination, the initial step in identifying a stroke is typically a physical examination. The physician will examine your nervous system neurologically, check your blood pressure, and listen to your heart. Imaging testing, imaging tests, like a CT scan or MRI, are used to identify the type and location of a stroke and confirm the diagnosis. Additionally, these tests can assist by ruling out other potential explanations of your symptoms, such as a brain tumor or a drug reaction. Blood tests, blood tests aid in eliminating other possible causes of symptoms and reveal stroke risk factors like high cholesterol and blood sugar levels. The FAST and B-FAST tests, these examinations reveal stroke signs and assist in determining whether a stroke is occurring. While BFASD stands for balance lost, eyesight loss, face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty, and time to call, FASD stands for face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty, and time to call. Cerebral angiography detects blockages or constrictions in the blood vessels that may be the source of a stroke in the brain. Here are some of the risk factors for stroke. High blood pressure stands as the primary risk factor for stroke. It might deteriorate the blood vessels responsible for blood flow to the brain, leading to a brain blood clot that results in a stroke. Heart disease is the second most significant stroke risk factor and the leading cause of death among stroke survivors. Smoking, the risk of an ischemic stroke is increased by smoking. It causes blood clots in the brain and harms blood vessels. Physical inactivity, the second largest risk factor for stroke is not getting enough exercise. It may result in high cholesterol, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Genetics or heredity, people with a family history of stroke are more likely to develop the condition. The importance of managing risk factors associated with stroke. Managing risk factors for stroke is crucial in preventing the onset of stroke through. Stroke prevention involves controlling risk factors like high blood pressure, obesity, inactivity, a poor diet, alcohol use, and inheritance. Reducing the severity of stroke, even if a person has a stroke, controlling risk factors can help lessen its effects and increase recovery prospects. For instance, managing high blood pressure can lower the risk of repeated strokes and prevent additional damage to brain blood vessels. Improved general health, adopting healthier habits like quitting smoking, a balanced diet, and regular exercise can reduce stroke risk. Blood clot in brain treatment. Depending on the type of stroke, doctors may prescribe aspirin or potent clot-busting medications. The procedure is best. When you take this drug within three hours of the onset of your symptoms, it works well. If a ruptured blood vessel causes the stroke, medical professionals will work to stop the bleeding as soon as possible. Recognizing these symptoms early and acting quickly can dramatically improve your chances of recovery and reduce your risk of serious complications. If you or someone you know experiences any of these symptoms, it is essential to seek immediate medical attention. Remember, in the face of a stroke, time is brain. Every minute counts. 
Now let's delve into the subject of heart health's most formidable adversary. There's a particular food that wreaks havoc on our hearts more than any other. You're probably thinking, it's got to be sugar, or surely it's those nasty saturated fats. But you might be in for a surprise. For many, sugar has been the prime suspect. It's been accused of causing insulin spikes, leading to inflammation and eventually heart disease. However, the reality is a bit more nuanced. While it's true that excessive sugar intake is harmful, it isn't the main villain in our story. And then there are the infamous fats, saturated, unsaturated trans fats. They've all had their fair share of bad press. We've been urged to cut down on our fat intake to maintain heart health. But again, the relationship between fats and heart disease isn't as straightforward as it might seem. Yes, certain types of fats, particularly trans fats, can increase your risk of heart disease. However, not all fats are created equal. Some fats, like those found in avocados, olive oil, and fatty fish, are actually beneficial for your heart. So if sugar and fats aren't the heart's worst enemies, then who or what is? The suspense thickens. Well, we won't keep you in the dark for too long. In the upcoming segments, we will unveil the true perpetrator, the unseen culprit behind heart diseases. This revelation might shift your perspective on what it really takes to maintain a healthy heart. Stay tuned as we reveal the real culprit behind heart diseases. You may have been thinking sugar or fats, but the real enemy is sodium. Now you might be wondering why sodium? Isn't it just a common ingredient in our kitchen? Well, to understand this, we need to delve a little deeper into the role of sodium in our bodies. Sodium is essential for several bodily functions. It helps maintain fluid balance, aids in muscle contraction, and plays a crucial role in nerve impulse transmission. But like with most things in life, too much of it can be harmful. When you consume excessive amounts of sodium, primarily through processed and fast foods, your body holds onto water to dilute it. This causes an increase in blood volume, which means your heart has to work harder to pump blood through your blood vessels. This increased workload can raise your blood pressure and make your heart muscle grow thicker, setting the stage for heart diseases. This is not just mere conjecture. Numerous scientific studies back it up. For instance, a study published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology found that people who consumed high amounts of sodium had an increased risk of heart diseases compared to those who consumed less. Another study from the American Heart Association showed that reducing sodium intake could help prevent over 100,000 deaths annually in the United States alone. However, the real challenge is that sodium is not just present in the salt shaker. It's hidden in many foods we eat daily, from bread to breakfast cereals, and even in some beverages. And let's not forget about those grab-and-go meals and fast foods, which are notorious for their high sodium content. So, the unseen culprit of heart diseases isn't the obvious sugar or fats, but sodium. It's an essential nutrient, yes, but in excess, it can be a silent killer, wreaking havoc on our hearts without us even realizing it. Now that we know the culprit, how can we avoid it? Avoiding sodium is easier said than done, but why is that so? Well, it's because most of us are unknowingly caught in what can be referred to as the sodium trap. The sodium trap is not about the sprinkling of salt we add to our dishes at the dinner table. Instead, it's about the hidden sodium lurking in many of the foods we consume daily without even realizing it. Take a stroll down any supermarket aisle and you'll find sodium sneaking into your shopping cart in the most unexpected ways. It's in your bread, it's in your canned soup, it's even in your breakfast cereal. And it's not just about the savory foods, even sweet treats can be sodium traps as well. The fact is, sodium is used as a preservative and flavor enhancer in a vast array of processed foods, making it almost omnipresent. But here's the good news. You can sidestep the sodium trap with a simple habit, reading food labels. By becoming aware of the sodium content in the foods you buy, you can make healthier choices. For instance, choosing fresh fruits and vegetables over canned ones or opting for low sodium versions of your favorite snacks can make a significant difference to your overall sodium intake. So remember the sodium trap is real and it's everywhere, but it doesn't have to ensnare you. Knowledge truly is power when it comes to our health. So how can we protect our hearts and live a healthier life? One of the most effective ways to safeguard our hearts is by reducing our sodium intake. Sodium, often hidden in the foods we eat daily, is a silent menace to our heart health. Let's dive into some practical tips. First and foremost, eat more fresh foods. Fresh fruits and vegetables, lean meats, whole grains, these are all naturally low in sodium. Incorporating more of these into our diets not only reduces sodium intake but also boosts overall nutrition. 
Next, avoid processed foods as much as possible. These are often high in sodium, used as a preservative to extend shelf life. This includes canned goods, frozen meals, and even some breads. Always check the label and make informed choices. Instead of relying on salt for flavor, explore the world of herbs and spices. Fresh or dried, they add a burst of flavor without the sodium. Try basil on your pasta, sprinkle some cinnamon on your oatmeal, or add a dash of paprika to your scrambled eggs. The possibilities are endless. Maintaining a low-sodium diet has numerous benefits for heart health. It can reduce blood pressure, decrease the risk of heart disease and stroke, and even improve kidney function. And remember, every small change can make a significant difference. It's never too late to start making healthier choices. Remember, your heart is in your hands. Make the choice to protect it today.